Should you trust GitHub Copilot to make an entire React hook for you? Let's find out on this Blue Collar Coder. I'm Jack Harrington, a principal full stack software engineer, and I actually love GitHub Copilot, but I use it in the inline style where it's just giving me suggestions as I go. I don't do the comment style where you explain what you want in a comment and have it give suggestions to you. The reason is because it can give some really funky results like it did with this use interval hook that I asked for. So let's go take a look at just how bad it was and go fix it. Okay, I'm in my Copilot cleanup directory. And from here, I'm going to go and use my create MF app to go and build us a React app with TypeScript and Tailwind. I'm going to call this bad timer, choose application, port number 8080, React, TypeScript, and Tailwind. All right, next, I'm going to bring up VS Code. And then I'm going to bring up the terminal and do yarn followed by yarn start. Now that's going to bring up this clean little app here. All it has is Tailwind installed and a component that goes and renders this out. Now, in order to understand how bad this timer is, we actually have to go and bring first a good timer in. And what I'm going to use is use hooks, use interval for that. So let's go back over and install that. And I'm going to use yarn add and then use hooks TS for TypeScript. And again, I'll use yarn start. Now that just gets us back to the same place as we had before. So I'm going to close down the terminal. We don't need that anymore. And I'm going to go over to app.tsx and we'll see what we've got. Okay. So what we're going to do is first give ourselves some state. So I'm going to go and make this a return statement and then give ourselves use state. So I'm going to create some good timer state. We'll call it good time and start it at zero. And we'll also create a playing toggle. And that'll just be true and false. Start off at false. And now from use hooks TS, I'm going to bring in that use interval. And I'm just going to use use interval. And then I'm going to set the good time to good time plus one. If you wonder what's actually giving me those hints, it's actually GitHub Copilot. So in that context, GitHub Copilot is actually really good. All right, so when we're playing, we want the timeout to be, well, 100 milliseconds. And I'm going to do it by tenths of a second. So that's going to give us 0.1 there. And so every time the interval fires, every 100 milliseconds, it's going to add 0.1 to this, and that's going to give us our timer. OK, so down here, I will create a new div. And I'll use a little bit of Tailwind. I'll give it a grid with two columns, okay, a gap between those two. And then we'll say that we have a div in here. It's going to have our good timer. And we'll do two fixed. Now that will give us our 0.1 on the end. And there we go. And now we need a button to go and toggle that playing state. So let's go and create another div down here. And we'll have a button. We'll say, if we are playing, then we're going to say stop. And if we are stopped, then we will say play. And the on click here, we'll just toggle that state. So we'll just invert set playing. All right, so there we go. Pretty good, actually. But it's a little small to see. So I'm going to go and add a style attribute and give it a zoom factor of five. Let's take a look. It's a little big. How about a zoom factor of three? All right, that's not bad. Let's do play. Yeah, okay. So we can now all see that. And then I'll go and add a little bit of styling to the button just to make sure that we can see that as a button. Give it a little padding on the X. Give it a little padding on the Y. Give it a nice background color of, say, purple. Yeah, okay. And let's actually give it a bit more darker purple. Okay, cool. So now let's go see what GitHub Copilot gave us. So I'm going to go create a new file here, and it's going to be called use timer. And I'm going to paste in the code that I got from GitHub Copilot. And we can actually see right away there's a problem. So let's take a look at what we've got here. So we're bringing in use state and use effect from React. Makes sense because we need to have some state and we're going to have some effects. 
And the next thing we're going to do is define our use timer hook. Makes a lot of sense. We're going to set that time to be a state starting at zero. Sounds real good. Okay, and then we're going to use our use effect. So what do we have here? We have an interval, which is what we're getting back from the set interval. Okay, that kind of makes some sort of sense. And then every time this fires at a thousand milliseconds per, so I have to change that. We're going to do set time to time plus one. Cool. And we're actually going to get that as a start function. And then, but that's inside of this use effect. So it's not actually, there's no way that I can get it. So that's why we've got this problem down here with the start, because start is only defined within this use effect. And we're actually trying to get it outside of that scope. So that's not great. Okay, so we have a problem right away. So we've also got this stop down here, and that stop does the clear interval and sets the time to zero. Okay, that's kind of interesting. And we have a cleanup function. So in a use effect, whenever this changes, whenever the dependency array changes and this use effect is rerun, then the previous cleanup function is called. So in this case, that would stop that interval, which is kind of interesting. So every single time time is changed, which would be this guy up here, we actually go through this whole effect again. So, ooh, okay, I don't know if this is gonna work all that well. So we got some problems, we gotta fix this first, that start thing. So let's go see if we can hack that and uh, see where we get to. All right, so let's go over here and we'll see, let start equal null. And we'll see if this works. Okay, so now we're gonna go over into our app and we're gonna bring that in. So I'm gonna bring in use timer from our local use timer. And then here I'm gonna call it, we're gonna have const, we're gonna have start, stop time. Yeah, that's cool, okay, great. So now let's go over here and we'll create another time. This is for the, the time coming out of timer like that. Okay, that seems decent. But now this toggle, well, it's not, yeah, okay. So what we need to do is actually make this a bit more interesting. We'll take this out, call that toggle. We'll create a new function here called toggle. Just basically and do what we had before, set playing, and we're gonna invert that. But you know, that's gonna make this interval work. But we also need to do this start and stop thing. So we're gonna say if we're playing currently, then stop that. And if we are not, then start that. Okay, let's give it a go here and see how we go. All right, so we got two numbers, it's pretty good. Let me just title those so we know which one's which. So I'm gonna put another two divs up here. We'll say that this is the good one that we know. And then, because it's a grid, it's gonna cascade like that. So we're gonna have good and bad. Okay, cool. Now, if I hit play, what happens? Nada. Okay, that's not great. Let's go right over into inspector, into the console, and see what's up. Okay, so start is not a function. It's probably not good. So what is start? All right, if it's not a function, what is it? All right, let's console log that out and see where we got to. So I'm gonna just do console log of start. Hit refresh and we get null. Okay, so let's take a look. So start actually is null, right? We start off with null. So I guess that's where that comes from. And then use effect is asynchronous. So it gets run, it sets start, but because it's not a piece of state, we actually don't know about it in Reactiverse. And so nothing actually updates in the app, which is why that start never goes from null to non-null being a function. So sounds like this is a non-starter and actually the code from GitHub Copilot doesn't work at all, which is not great. Okay, so let's just start working on it. And the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of replicate what we had it from the app and have a, a local playing. All right. That's kind of cool. And then let's go down here and let's fix up start and stop. So start is gonna say that we want to set playing to true, right? And stop should probably set playing to false. And then we want this use effect to basically run or not run based on that playing. So let's put in the playing there. And then we'll see if we're playing, then we're gonna do a lot of this stuff. So let's go and take everything in there because that's really our timer, right? And we'll get rid of that. And let's see, so so let's go and get rid of this, actually. I don't think we need that anymore. We already have a start. 
And then we'll kind of compress this a little bit. So let's just say let enroll equal that. And it's not going to change. So we can make that a const. And let's see. So we don't really need a stop. We already have a stop. So let's go and take the contents of that and put it into our cleanup function. OK. Sounds pretty good, I guess. Let's see. So we also don't need these windows. So let's get kind of crunch that down a little bit. And uh, OK, let's try it out. OK, so we're going to hit play. And oh, interesting. OK, so we're getting a lot. OK, so we're getting some console logs there from our app. That's cool. So let's actually go back here and change the interval to 100 milliseconds because we want that to be 100 millisecond timer. And let's see if there's any difference there. So play. Ah, OK, so the little burbles every once in a while. So what's happening here? So one thing you can do when you have a problem with the use effect is you can put in some console logs. So I'm going to put in a console log here and say that we're starting that timer. Let's see what happens. So I hit refresh and I hit play. Whoa. OK, that's interesting. So why is this happening? That's that's a problem. So what's happening here is we are actually restarting this timer every time. And because there's this cleanup function, we're actually doing that set time to zero every single time. So if we get rid of that, what happens? Let's hit refresh, hit play, and uh -huh, OK, we're good to go, I think. OK, but there's some kind of interesting thing going on here. So if I hit stop, it's only been nine and a half seconds. But our good timer says nine and a half seconds, but our bad timer says 9.3 seconds. So that's kind of interesting. So what's happening here is you're seeing that React isn't always synchronous. In fact, it's mostly asynchronous. So what's happening here is that we are setting this time. That's then effectively rerunning this whole hook again, and then asynchronously registering that we want to redo this effect. And then that effect fires and creates this interval, which goes on to the next iteration. And so there's kind of a cumulative slowdown here. So let's just say that that's, you know, 30 milliseconds per cycle. Like this actual value here is like 130, where we're adding, you know, 0.1 every time, which should be 100 milliseconds. So that's that delta. And that's why this timer is actually slower than the real timer. So let's go see if there's a way to fix that. OK, so the reason why this use effect is getting rerun all this time is that this time is changing. So let's see, can we pull that out of there? So let's hit save and then play. Ah, that's kind of weird. So we went from 0 to 0 0.1. OK, so what's happening here? Are we actually still getting callbacks? Well, let's find out. So I can go in here and I can make this a function. And I can take that console log out there and I can say, timer fired, right? So that's that should work. Let's see. I'm gonna hit refresh, hit play. And we get all these timer firings. But we're still just doing point one. Well, so what's happening here is we have a stale closure. So when this use effect is first run, when it goes from playing false to playing true, we capture the value of time at that point. And that time is valued at zero then. And so what happens is I can put in here, what is the value of time? And we can see that it's captured at zero. So let's hit refresh again, hit play. And then we can see that it's just zero, 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 zero over and over and over again. So how do we fix that? Well, let's take this back to just this. And then talk about set time. Because set time actually has two ways to call it. One way to call it is just with a new scalar value. In this case, time plus 0.1. Another way to call it is with a function. It takes the argument that is the current value. So we'll call that current time. And then we'll say current time plus 1. All right, looking pretty good. All right, let's see uh, after nine seconds or so if we're still synchronized. And nine point pop, nine point eight, nine point eight. Nice. All right, very cool. 
But now there's one more refinement that I would do here because I'm not exactly happy with this particular mechanism because we're kind of depending on set interval to really fire every 100 milliseconds. And for the most part, it does. But what do we really want? Well, we really want to have a delta between the time that we hit play and the current time. So that's the way that I would implement it. I would start off with the start time and then do date.now and then just set the current time to be whatever the current time is minus the start time. So let's hit save and then run it. And then we realize real fast that we are off by three orders of magnitude because we are doing milliseconds as opposed to seconds. But it's an easy fix though. Let's just go and divide this by a thousand and that gives us seconds. Hit play and away we go. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope I didn't beat up on GitHub Copilot too bad. I really love GitHub Copilot. It saves me a ton of time. I just don't use it like this. And in this particular example, which was just really, really bad. So in the meantime, I hope you learned a bunch about use effect and use state, and in particular, how they work with asynchronous stuff like this timer, because actually this is really fundamental to understanding how to use hooks right. And I put a few more videos of mine in the description down below that should help you if you're struggling with concepts like this. In the meantime, of course, if you like the video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.